In this video, I want to talk about creating a really rough terrain. Uh, this uh, is a very simple process, especially with the new look dev nodes. And with a few little handy tricks, you can create a very rugged terrain just like this in just a few simple steps. So as you can see here, we have a couple of different elements. Um, we have this ridge line here and this large mountain, and they were created separately. So the mountain was created like this. And then the ground was created like this, and the, the ridge line is part of that. And both of them were combined and processed until we get this. So as you can see, the graph is not that complex. And um, I'll show you exactly what I did to get this. So let's just start with a fresh file, and we'll get a random mountain. Um, I, I'm usually OK working in um, 512 by 512 resolution for the initial part, because um, this is, in a way, much like sculpting. I, I don't want to worry about the, the the fine details until I have the major shapes ready. And then again, because it's procedural, the software will take care of a lot of the smaller details. So um, the starting point is basically a little bit of seed hunting. And so I'm just going to go to the, the mountain node and then start looking for a mountain shape that would... Um, be uh, you know just attractive enough for the kind of standalone mountain that I have in my head. Uh, I don't want something that sharp. This kind of looks cool. I just wish it was a bit more um, expanded, and I think I can get that. So I will go to the post process stack and raise this first using the multiplier, and then um, using shaper I can bulk it up a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit there. So this may not look much right now, but once we do a bit of erosion on this and a few other tricks, then this will start looking uh, a, a lot more mountainous. So right now the basic shape is pretty cool. It's, um, you know, I don't like having the mountain be too typical. Um, even if you want a peak, that's um, a typical peak. I, I prefer eroding it into that rather than having that shape from the start because that's how erosion work. It uh, works. It just it takes away um, sediments and other material and carves out the mountain that you want. So you want to give it more material to start with, and that is why um, we have this bulked up a bit so that even when it loses material, it's still going to retain uh, a, a large chunk of itself. So the next thing I want to do is add a bit of folding. So I'm going to drag out a line and type in fold. And we have the fold um, uh, look dev node attached to this. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit. Uh, mainly I want a lot of folding. But at the same time I want um, uh, a nice slanted shape on the side. So I'm going to lower the range which gives me that. So I think a nice shape like this. And again, as you can see, the height that we have had with the other one has already gone a bit, but that's okay. That's what we were planning on. So we bulk up a bit before, and then it's okay to lose a little bit of material here and there. That's actually looking pretty cool. I think I might try a little different angle just to see what happens. Uh, that looks cool. I, I like this shape that's being created. Um, and then if I just want to just see how it'll look like in with a bit more resolution, I'll switch to 1K. But as you can see, the general shape is the same, so that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it 1K for now. Um, so that, that looks pretty good. Again, I'm not too worried about what kind of details I'll get. Um, again, that's something I prefer to leave to the procedural algorithms. So now with the fold done, I think we can do a little bit of erosion. Maybe not too much. Uh, we'll see. So right now, this is now starting to look a lot more like a typical peak. And I like how this is coming out. I think I just want more uh, pronounced features on this. So deeper grooves would definitely help. And I think I can get that. Uh, I'll increase the down cutting uh, all the way to 50%. Hit apply because this is a heavy node. Yeah, that's, that's more like what I was thinking of. Uh, but I still want this to be craggier. And to do that, I'm going to increase the random sedimentation um, to 200%. 
there we have a lot more ejecta from everywhere and the last thing i want to do and this is one of my favorite tricks on on um, rocky terrains is i turn on min mode you can see all the sediment at the bottom is gone even some at the top will kind of disappear and we get these nice collapses and um, that's because we're just taking the minimum of the two and so uh, the original shape was lower uh, so if I go here you can see that and so any extra sediment that was created is kind of gobbled up so this is looking cool and because I'm uh, losing some of the sediment I don't or, or I will be able to lose that sediment I'm not too worried about making this um, throw out more ejecta so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the strength and increase the duration because again erosion looks best when you give it a lot of time to work so with that in mind let's see what oh yeah there we go that's kind of what I was thinking of so we still have our basic shape we have these deep grooves and uh, we don't have to worry about the excess um, uh, sediments in there and that'll come in handy in a little bit when I tell you how we're going to work with this mountain. So let me just tweak this a little bit. So let's say if I wanted more sediments, um, I can increase inhibition and that'll produce uh, wider flows, which is cool because now we kind of have like that and uh, the deep grooves going together and then we still get these collapses and the collapses are actually enhanced by having more erosion because first you do get this cool um, wide flow that's you know a gentler slope than these craggy um, furrows but then once it reaches the min point it just goes minimum and then you get to see the other one below there just like here so I think having a little bit of extra erosion is kind of working out for us so I think the next thing I want to do is kind of like accentuate that further, have a, a more collapses. And to do that, I'm going to add a shear node. And shear will stagger shapes and pull them around and create collapses. So like you can see, this is a pretty smooth flow, which is you know kind of OK. Uh, but if you want it to be more characterful, then now with this, you can see there are um, plates jutting out and all these extra shapes being created and we kind of start breaking down the the, the slightly um, atypical look that you get from erosion uh, how much you want to do with, uh, with this is of course up to you you can reduce folding so you don't get that much um, I'm gonna increase it or I'll right click and set it to default I kind of like how that was going um, just like with the fold I'm gonna because this also does folding this is basically folding at a much smaller scale uh, I'm gonna change the direction just to see what other shapes I can get um, I think that looks cool I kind of like having this um, slightly smooth slope back I think I can use this later on especially if we add snow or something like that uh, anyways I think this is good enough for now we have a really good mountain and then we can work on it further later uh, what we need now is kind of like the, the overall uh, terrain or the world on which to put this mountain and so for that I'm going to start with a ridge node and that's the kind of ground that we get um, I would like it to be a bit more featureful so I'm going to increase the definition all the way to 100 so we get lots more shapes. Uh, I think I'll play with the seed a bit to see if um, we can get something uh, more interesting. I can always play with scale, but just kind of feeling lazy. I'll think I, I'll let, I'll just let the node do the work. Uh, oh, that looks cool. I think with a bit more work, this can really work. So I think the first thing I'll do is I'll um, like with the other one. I'll add shear. So it can start pulling these things apart and I'm going to change the direction until it starts affecting those slopes more there that kind of works oh that's good I can increase the folding if I want it uh, to affect it even more and what I like is it's taking these more straight shapes and then carving these um, areas out so that'll make for some pretty interesting things uh, I think the height is right. 
I will switch to the other one to see how they will work. Oh yeah, I don't have to worry too much about the height. In fact, I can increase the height for the ridge a little bit. Um, let's see, 38, something like that, 40. So yeah, almost 40. There, this is now more rugged. That could, that'll, you know, fit better with the rest of the mountain shape that we had. So that looks cool. And we still have most of the nice features. So the the uh, the shear did not get messed up because of the height increase. That's good. If that were to happen, what I would do is go back to ridge. Um, let me undo this, and then go back to shear. So there we go back to what we had. I'm going to go click raise in the post process stack for shear, and I'll increase the multiplier until I got what I wanted. So this also, as you can see, works. So I could just go and type in 1.45. I don't want it to be too tall. And yeah, that works. Uh, I think I still want more um, complex shapes here. So for that, I'm gonna add a canyonizer. So as you can see, the canyonizer is doing what it, what it says on the tin. It's now really starting to make all these canyons. I think I will switch to a very low depth so it doesn't carve out everything. I still wanted to start carving out stuff. In fact, I'll increase the number of octaves. Uh, so it'll start carving out more and more. Uh, and then keeping the depth low means it won't completely empty out my terrain, especially because this is a very low terrain, but it's still creating these extra shapes. So if I go back, you can see this now is starting to look a bit plain in comparison. So there, this is more featureful and that kind of starts fitting in with what we have going on here. And so next thing is we can put these together. So I'm gonna select these two and uh, create a combiner, right click for a preset and go 100% max. And so our terrains are now playing together. Uh, because they are so craggy, you can see it's kind of almost like a seamless transition, even though we do have seams here and here and here and here. But uh, it still, uh, you know, doesn't look that noticeable, or rather it actually feels like it was planned. Um, what I would like to do is play with the mountain a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a transform node. So I'll just add a transform node to the shear output, and I'm going to connect that here so what I want to do is move the mountain around and I want to see what's happening while I'm moving it around so I'm gonna hit F to lock my preview by pinning the combined node here and I'm gonna to go to the transform and now I can change this around so if I move this a little bit and also this is percentage but you can also enter this in meters so um, our whole world right now is 5,000 on either side. So if I right click here and I type in 380 meters and hit enter, it'll move it appropriately, appropriately to that position. So that's kind of looking cool. What I want to do is I want to, I like this slope. Uh, I like it far more than this area. I'm going to give that precedence. So I'm going to move this around a bit. Also, uh, depending on your configuration, if this feels a bit slow, you can always switch down to 512 for the moment. So uh, it's quickly rebuilding as I switch down. And then now um, I can move this and you get a near real time preview. So that's good that, that if if you know if you're having trouble guessing or anticipating how something will look and want to see the result by experimenting a lot just switch down to 512 um, so let's see I'm gonna I don't want to cover up some of the really cool stuff that's the that's the main thing so I'm gonna let's see I'm gonna take this here of course now I lose that really nice slope so I'm gonna rotate this guy in there that's good and Let's move it around a bit. Okay, that's cool. Now, you might have noticed this. Um, if I go to shear, uh, you'll see there's a hard edge here. That's not good normally. And I would add a zero borders node to this to kind of smooth the edge out. But because we're... De uh, there, there you can see it. But because we're dealing with... Um, 
a, you know, like a, a really craggy, rocky surface here. I'm not that worried about it. It actually get uh, merged into the whole thing. And if it's not, I'm still going to do a bit more of processing. So um, that'll take care of it. And then if that still doesn't do it, then you can always just go back to this point, add a zero borders, you'll be fine. So uh, with this, I think we should also make this a bit smaller. So I'm going to reduce the scale a bit. There, now you can see that thing's right there. Um, again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not really worried about that edge here right now. Uh, I think we're okay with it. I'm just going to get this thing sorted out first. There. I think that, that's a good look for this terrain where we have all these, um, uh, you know, ragged slopes coming down and then there's this kind of mountain by the side. That's cool. So that works. Uh, I'm going to switch to 1K again so we can see a bit more detail because the next stuff will deal with detailing because this is what I consider our um, kind of like the finished shape um, in general. So, oh, there's that line I was talking about. Um, again, I think the next processing will take care of it. If not, I'll come back. So that's, that's starting to look cool. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to add uh, 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 processing uh, on the whole thing, the combined thing, so that when they uh, experience that together, the the disparate parts get processed the same way, and then that starts making it look like it's part of the same world. And so the first thing I want to do is add. Um, I think let's go with uh, shatter. So I'm going to add shatter. And that, as you can see, immediately started shattering everything. I think that's a bit too much. Um, let's go with uh, lesser strength. I'm also going to decrease the feature scale. Okay, that's a bit better. So with shatter, um, we kind of take away a lot of this stuff, uh, where it's plates and overlapping things. And then we get slightly smoother areas like this because a lot of it has been shattered and moved around um, let's see if I try min um, it's not gonna work much here because everything's lower um, if you do max you can see that's how much we have lost here right there now if you wanted to bring these two together there's a great way to do this so uh, we can do it two ways you can do it procedurally or you can do it through a hand painted mask so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a uh, Berlin right now and once you see it, you'll know how to get the same thing with a hand-painted mask. Um, that looks okay. I'm just gonna auto-level this. And then I'm gonna feed this back to the combine, which will give me a new combine. And I'll put the Berlin here. And oops, and I'm gonna switch this to 100% blending. So now what's happening is, with this Berlin, which if I turn on the 2D view, you can see there, the brighter bits will bring in parts of the old one. So we start getting um, some of that cragginess back. So Shatter made all this smooth. Hey, we're getting it back. So if I wanted more of it, I could go in, um, press F on the combine, and then go back to the Berlin node, turn on Shaper, and I can start expanding it. Uh, that preview is a bit jerky, but um, you can see I'm now getting more and more of the original. So let's go back to Shatter and this. So yeah, we're getting some of that back and then switching between these two, we can see what works, what doesn't. And so with that, I can go in and you know maybe make modifications. Again, you can also just hand paint areas that you want um, that's fine too. I think I'm gonna reduce shaper a little bit But then at the same time, I'm gonna increase the multiplier and because this is going out of bounds I will clamp this just to be safe uh, Clamp will ensure that it doesn't go beyond the hundred percent value so going back here Now I am getting this whole area back and the other part can remain shattered um, and then I can go in here um, choose a smaller scale like so 
can go back here and I can get um, different shapes. So you can play with it or just go create a hand painted mask and then plug that in and that way you can just say I want those things here and you're done. Now, um, as I was afraid this edge is going to bother us a little bit. Um, if the next step doesn't work then I will go in and clean it up. And the next step is adding another canonizer. Woohoo! Okay, that worked. And the reason I'm adding another canonizer is um, I kind of made the shatter uh, make everything a bit smooth. I wanted to bring some of the the cragginess back, but the more more importantly, I wanted to create areas where we could create lakes and other water elements. So with this. I think our basic terrain is kind of complete. So next thing, I'm going to drag this out and create a lake. Oh, that's too much water. Um, I think what I'll do is I will remove precipitation completely, turn on flood control, and switch this just 1% water. And so there, now these lower areas are full of um, um, the water that we want it's taking all the low areas here and making really good use of it uh, there's some up here I don't want that and there's an easy enough way to do uh, to fix that so I'm gonna create a mask and okay let me pin this so I don't get the warning um, so I'm gonna paint a mask and because this is a precipitation mask and not a mask of where I want the lakes. Um, so basically, I just want the lakes to be here and to fill in the channels that go here. Okay. I think that's good enough. I'm going to add a auto level to this. And uh, I'm going to apply rays. Actually, I don't need rays. I'm going to apply uh, nothing, actually. Auto level is more than enough. And then that goes into the lake um, precipitation input or the rainfall input. Now you can see we don't have the other lake to worry about, except that one. Um, not sure how that came in. Uh, might be a bug. Um, but at least we have the lakes here where we want it. And so with that, um, I can actually turn off flood control and then increase the precipitation and because the rainfall only occurs in these areas we don't get uh, lakes up here and here like we would get with just normal rainfall so now I can go crazy with precipitation um, let me go really crazy with precipitation let's see what get oh that's a cool lake okay I think I think we'll take it and let's see what's the depth so that's the general depth um, if I go canyonizer in there okay that's cool uh, we could probably actually let's just go 100% on the precipitation what the heck um, we can have a slightly larger lake we still get to keep our cool slope and the collapse and then we can get a bit more depth here so well, since we've gone this far, I think let's go ahead and do a little bit of coloring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a texture node from the canyonizer. I want the lake because that's not where the ground is. Um, the flat part will mess with the, the texture creation. Um, so I'm just going to there um, use this. I'm going to hook that up to a, a set map and let's go find something that might work so that's not sure i think uh having a little bit mix of things would be nice i think that that's kind of cool um i want more green on this so i'll go ahead and add a um a vegetation map and let's see i'll add a bit of chaos and increase the slope bottom a little bit maybe not that much I like having that slightly arid look to it so that's good enough and then now we need to give 
um, color to our water so we can merge this in so um, what we'll do is I will first um, take the lake depth output and add an auto level so I can see it. Um, sometimes with shallower water, you can see it's barely visible. But if I give it an auto level, there I get the whole thing. Uh, next, I'm gonna add a clutter node, and this will help me color it all. So uh, I have pinned the uh, lake node as an underlay, which is either G or this. And then now I can visualize the lake on that surface. So because we're using the depth no uh, the depth output, we can use that to colorize this. So let's see, I am going to pick a nice lighter color uh, for the edges, that, that looks nice. And then for the deeper bits, we need, uh, I think it okay, needs to be a bit more greener, maybe, not sure. Yeah, something like that uh, that's a good enough starting point at least so I'll add um, another stop here drag that down because we don't want everything to be tr completely visible because that would look like it's transparent I also think this is kind of bright and too blue in comparison to the shade we picked up here so I'll move this around also if you if you have a bit of trouble getting the right hue you can always just click the um, the magnifier controls up here. This will give you more precision. Ooh, didn't mean to do that, although that kind of looked cool. Uh, let's see, something a bit uh, desaturated, like that. that. At least this is a good starting point. Now, before I mess with this further, what I want to do is see how it interacts with the rest of the texture. So let's combine these two and to mask it. We will connect it to the lake's mask. And of course, 100% blending. Although sometimes it can be pretty cool if you just go like 90% or so, some of the texture peeks out and that can be interesting. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of keep it there for now, that's fine. So look at that, we have our lake. Uh, I'm gonna hit F here, because I wanna modify this a little bit. So with here, can start doing this and then that looks cool um, one of the things I don't like is if this follows the terrain too precisely so for that what I want to do is I'm going to drag a line out here and I'm going to add a blur um, let's see the blur doesn't need to be too powerful I think 0.1 and then maybe two iterations is more than enough then I'm going to add a warp and the warp will be tiny, like 5% size. Um, oh, that's even too much. 2%, um, 1%. Okay, 2% it is. So there, we'll have 2%. And I'm gonna, uh, well, normally with warp, I would increase the roughness. I kinda wanna avoid that here because we are um, thinking of refraction here and the refraction should be slightly blurry especially from a, a distant vantage point uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the strength to um, just five but then at the same time I'm gonna increase the number of iterations to eight so let's see that was not too visible because the size is too small so I'm gonna go five percent now if I increase the uh, iterations, so this is actually, it might need a slightly higher, there we go. Now it's starting to create these undulating shapes. I think I can go lower on the um, size. Strength needs to be, let's say 18, and then we can do lots of iterations. And this is very fast, it takes just a few milliseconds. So you can have that. Then because this is also drifting out a bit, I'm gonna go min again, like we did with the other stuff, and then kind of get, you know, a bit of both. Uh, the other thing you can do is, um, let's say feed this, uh, oops, feed this back here, 
and then you can kind of choose like the best of both little blur little this little that um, and then now I'll feed this to clutter and I messed up the graph a little bit but I think it's fairly visible what I'm doing I'll just organize this just in case so there now we have a little bit of drift uh, the undulation caused by the the warping that we created here in fact I can I think I can take out the min let it be like this because um, it goes in anyways uh, so there now you can see we get this little bit of drift um, which if you want more of you just go and increase the strength and you can um, if you increase the strength too much and start getting these undulations uh, or the the perturbation too much um, you can decrease the iterations and then increase the strength you can also play with roughness a little bit because we are doing multiple iterations I think we can kind of get away with the roughness uh, and then going back here you can see we get these great shapes and they don't exactly follow the terrain so it feels more natural and not too systematic so there we have it our graph um, it's a bit wide but it's not that complex so we started here got a cool looking mountain then we made a cool looking uh, ground mix them together processed them a bit made our lakes colored it like so made the lakes like so um, and then added some lake coloration and then come by and you're good to go so i hope you have fun making terrains like this <laughs>